Once this aeroplane stops displaying, we'll never see its like again. The Falcon continues to attract record-breaking audiences and air shows where she performs. We're, I think, very privileged to have her here at Abingdon today. She goes to all the big shows, the Royal International Air Tattoo, the Bournemouth Festival, shows on the continent and others around Britain. And at many shows, the gate, the amount of people going to the show, is increased by something like 20% when people find out that Vulcan's coming. She is, no question about it, Britain's favourite aeroplane. She's also the people's aeroplane. One of the extraordinary things about Falcon, she was designed in 1948, inspired just before his death by the man who designed the brilliant Lancaster bomber, Roy Chapman. He died in 1947. But when the prot prototype Falcon, the Avro 698 tailless Delta, first flew in 1952, only 11 years after the Lancaster, I mean, they might be aeroplanes of a different century. But she created an absolutely extraordinary reaction. Within 10 hours, she was clearly as manoeuvrable as a fighter. The following year, it was being rolled like a fighter by its test pilots, even at the Farnborough Air Show. 136 of these were built originally, including prototypes. And with its contemporary bombers, the Valiant and the Victor, Vulcan was designed to carry the British nuclear deterrent. When the submarine launched, nuclear missiles came along in the mid-60s, Falcons lost their awesome responsibility of providing the quick reaction alert nuclear deterrent and became instead tactical, low-level, conventional bombers. And they changed colour from brilliant anti-radiation white to the current camouflage scheme, which we're seeing very shortly. Now, right at the end of... Falcon's operational career on the 30th of April 1982, supported by Victors and other Falcons. Falcon 607 hit the centre line, Port Stanley Runway, in the Falkland Islands, flown by the man flying there today, Martin Withers, DMC. Here she is, the wonderful Abro Falcon. That great triangle shape, the Americans called her the orbit of overcast because when she flies over the sky goes down. She's about the same size as a model, any small airliner and one of the small airbuses. 111 foot wingspan, 105 foot length, they just exchange around from the airbus. So it's about that size, but she looks so much bigger because she's filled in. Wing shape of that triangle. An absolutely stunning shape. Coming back towards us from the far side of the airfield. And you get a, a view from ahead where she looks so slim. Children who see this for the first time, sometimes we've actually heard people say, is it a new kind of stealth uh -huh, uh -huh. And yet this is a bomber first flew in the 1950s. Ascension Island with Martin Withers, the man in the left hand 
seat today of black, from the Black Buck operation. And from these 21 1,000 pound bombs, bear in mind these are just wartime bombs, no guidance or anything like that, they managed to hit the Port Stanley runway with two of them, one in the centre and one on the edge. They made the runway unusable for Argentine first jet, uh, fast jets. And it also suggested to the Argentines that if, they, if it became necessary, a raid could be made on their mainland. As she comes back, we'll see the bomb doors closing again. But that raid to the Falkland Islands was the longest bombing raid in history. 7,760 miles round trip. That's further than from here to Santiago in Chile.
save any of the electronics off the, the back of the aircraft. So I say, keeping me in touch with what's going on. He works for Selex Galileo. He wanted me to mention that because they give him time off to go fly with the Falcon. And that is the end of the Vulcan display. As she's heading back to Robin Hood, Sheffield, Doncaster, Finningley, 